In this video, we're going to be talking about a few applications and extensions from neurulation. So previously, we had talked about how the actual neural tube forms from the folding of the neural groove and the neural plate and how these cells are kind of differentiating in order to develop into the beginnings of the spinal cord. But there can be things that go wrong. So for example, we can look at something specifically where you don't get this vertebral arc that actually forms properly. Um, this bone, there's a series of these, this is called a centrum, and they provide support and protect the spinal cord. The actual tissue here, this bone tissue actually develops on the ventral side, so it's on the belly side of the actual neural tube. So if I have to go back over here, it's starting to develop from here and the tissue grows out either way and it's going to curve up and around and then try to meet in the center here. And so you can see in this process, here's a little, uh, you can't really see it, it's a little arrow, but the tissue's coming up here and it needs to meet up here in order to form the full arc. And if the arc doesn't actually form properly, then you can end up with a gap in it, which can actually cause um, the improper formation of the lower back, basically. And if this happens in different levels of severity, this is what it's supposed to look like normally, but then you can actually end up with a gap and it can cause kind of bulging of tissue uh, and blood can come out here, basically, and that can also um, severely hinder the person's ability to have proper back support and you can see this in early development kind of images. So not a very fun kind of topic to talk about but it does help us to emphasize just how important it is for organisms to differentiate and develop properly. Also another further application is to understand kind of the scientific method an approach to how we kind of learned some of this stuff. Obviously, it would be really, I was going to say awesome, but it wouldn't be very awesome if people were doing experiments on humans to see how embryos actually develop. One problem is embryos develop for humans actually inside the body. So to be able to monitor this process uh, without causing harm or death, it'd be a serious ethical thing, ethical reach of humanity so we don't really do that but what we can do is we can use animals because they're not human some of you may have issues with that but a lot of what we know is based on these cute little fellas over here the famous Xenopus levis a frog and the mus musculus one of the best genus and species names there is around in town mus musculus so we can watch these guys because they're being developed kind of externally or we can make sure we can put them in a dish and make sure that they're developing externally and we can watch this process uh, they can develop a lot quicker than humans do they're a little bit less complex than humans are and they don't complain or at least we can try to make sure the process is as harmless as possible some other quick examples that have been used before we've studied the development of flatworms, C. elegans to be specific. Uh, we've looked at fruit flies. I used fruit flies when I was in college, especially D. melanogaster. D stands for Drosophila. And then we have, of course, X. lavis and Mus musculus. So if you get a chance to ever use these kinds of little critters in the future, please make sure that you are following ethical procedures and especially following the diploma program ethical guidelines to ethical treatment of animals in animal experimentation.